thank you for joining us during this special series running throughout the month of July, focused exclusively on women leaders and payments. We've got great content this month focused on mentorship, career advice, getting out of your comfort zone, having your voice heard, and much, much more. A special thanks to our contributing sponsors, Stacks Payments, Nuve, and Map Advisors, and to our episode sponsors, NMI, Daily Pay, GD, and Ingenica. As we continue our month dedicated to women leaders in payments, today I welcome Gretchen Bender, Senior Vice President at Map Advisors, to the show. We've got a great episode ahead, so let's get started. Hi, Gretchen. Thank you for being here and welcome to the Leaders in Payments podcast. And more specifically, thank you for participating during Women Leaders in Payments Month. Hi, Greg. Uh, It's nice to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So if you don't mind, let's start off having you tell our audience a little bit about yourself, maybe where you grew up, where you went to school, where you currently live, a few things like that. Sure. So I grew up in Springfield, Illinois. And uh, I went to uh, the University of Arizona for undergrad in Tucson. A few years after that, I obtained my MBA from UC Irvine. And for about 20 years, the early part of my career, I lived in the LA, Orange County, you know, Southern California area. In 2010, I had the opportunity while I was working for Global Payments to move to Las Vegas. So that's where I reside now. All right, great. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Map Advisors and a little about Map Advisors. Sure. So Map is a boutique fintech advisory firm. It stands for Mergers, Acquisitions, and Payments Processing. We're known for sell side M&A, but we also do buy side. We do capital raises. Um, we'll find strategic partners as well. Um, On the consulting side, our services range from um, portfolio valuations to um, payments monetization, maybe a a SaaS company that's uh, not taking payments right now, not monetizing payments, we can help them get started. Um, We can create a go-to-market plan. We um, can help any company uh, grow revenue. Uh, We also have some people on the team that are operational experts So we can help with um, contract audits or renegotiations, whether that's with processors or any third party. Um, We can help a company buy technology. And um, we also provide compliance and risk management services. Okay, and what is your role there? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm responsible for business development and I work across all practices. Okay, so can you tell us what makes Map Advisors unique in the marketplace? Sure. So first of all, we're led by uh, former founders of payments companies, Jim Batista and Alexander Renzi, uh, formerly uh, started and successfully exited five companies collectively. So they really have the experience to take a company, you know, prepare a company for exit and, and take it to market. Um, second, we're very targeted in our approach. Um, we spend a lot of times with our a lot of time with our clients in due diligence, um, helping them prepare. Um, we work with them sometimes for one, even two years prior to an exit. You know, when we do our due diligence and we see ways that they can increase their valuation, um, we'll help them do that before taking them to market. And then third, uh, we work with clients of all sizes and all stages of their life cycle. Uh, from pre-revenue to publicly traded companies. Um, our, our typical clients could range from ISOs to um, SaaS or technology companies, uh, payment facilitators, processors, gateways, POS companies. Um, primarily, we work on the acquiring side. However, we have assisted some issuing clients as well. Okay, great. So before we get into the meat of the conversation, I want to do a quick icebreaker exercise where I'm going to ask you a this or that question. You give me the answer and we're going to run through 10 of them real quick. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. Do you prefer summer or winter? Summer. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Apple or Android? Apple. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Books or movies? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm going to say movies. Okay. But I love Beach books. Or mo- okay. Beach or mountains? 
<laughs> Beach. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Texting or calling? Calling, please. The city or the country? The country. Okay. And the last one, pizza or pasta? Pizza. Okay, great. All right. That was, a, that was a lot of fun. So let's start talking about you and your career. Um, tell us, when did you start in payments and kind of give us that journey to, to where you are today? Mm -hmm. So I started in payments in 1996 and I literally fell into it. Um, when I first moved to LA, I worked in Hollywood. So I worked on uh, some TV shows, for production company. I worked for a talent agency and um, I had a ton of fun, um, but I was getting to the point where I really needed to use my degree and, you know, get a, I'll call it, get a real job. So uh, I was traveling home from a trip over Thanksgiving. I was on a plane and I sat next to a gentleman um, on the plane and we started talking and he you know, told me that he owned an ISO, which I had never heard of. I had never heard of the payments company or of the, of the payments industry. And, um, you know, he said, well, we've got some open positions if you'd, you know, like to check them out. And so afterward I did. And I ended up going to work for that company. Uh, we were a small ISO that sat inside a bank and we did all the merchant services uh, for that bank. And it was a great way to start because we were so small. I got to learn everything. I did everything from, um, you know, selling merchant accounts to customer service, helping merchants with chargebacks. I would uh, program and deploy terminals. It was a really, really great experience. And from there, I just kind of grew my career. Um, I had roles at other ISOs. I had roles at other banks. Um, I worked in operations, I worked in sales. Um, for most of my career, I've spent at um, the larger companies. So 14 years at Global Payments where I led direct sales um, for their banking channel, and then also an inside sales team, which back then was you know, really the start of what we now know as VAR and ISV channels. Um, also, while at Global Payments, I served as president of Comerica Merchant Services, which at the time was a um, joint venture with Global Payments. Uh, I had a sales leadership role at uh, PaySafe for a while. And just prior to joining MAP, uh, I worked for FIS as head of uh, merchant sales. And then, as most of you know, we acquired WorldPay. And I held a few roles at WorldPay. Uh, I... Uh, led the ISV team in the UK, which is a lot of fun and uh, very interesting. And then I came back to the US and I led uh, the ISO and PayFact divisions for WorldPay. About a year and a half ago, I joined MAP. Um, we just wanted a change. I uh, wanted to work for a smaller company and uh, made the move in, in January of 23. Okay, great. So obviously you've been very successful throughout your career. What are your, some of your guiding principles? Yeah, I think, boy, you know, find the opportunity, right? As you just heard, I, I had a lot of different roles and uh, a lot of different companies. And I think you just always have to find that next opportunity, you know, learn as much as you can. I think it really benefits you to learn different aspects of this industry operations sales, um, you know, leadership, risk, uh, underwriting, just learn as much as you possibly can. Um, another, another guiding principle I would say is um, love what you do, uh, respect your colleagues, uh, learn from your colleagues, um, learn from your bosses, um, you can always learn something from somebody. And that's really how I've grown my career is I'm just always learning. And then I think personally, I'm the kind of person that comes prepared. Um, I deliver on time. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I get it done. Um, I think that I um, am transparent. Uh, I communicate to my bosses, as to my colleagues, as well as um, to my team. Uh, think ahead. And I think, like I said before, you have to enjoy what you do. Uh, or else 
why do it? You're, you're at your desk or you're, you're working, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours a day. Some of us, so you've got to love what you do. Right. All right. So what are some of the biggest challenges you faced as a female leader and how did you overcome them? You know, I, I look at leadership. I don't know the challenges that I've had or, you know, because I was a female leader, I think those challenges, you know, would have been there, uh, you know, all along. I think as a female, it's, it's how you react to um, some of those challenges. Um, as a leader, I try to bring all the tools in my arsenal to, to solve a problem or, you know, find a resolution to whatever that challenge is. Sometimes that means more empathy. Um, sometimes it means knowing when to be really pragmatic, especially if you're a sales leader, uh, you know, helping your team hit a uh, sales quota or you yourself have a sales quota to hit. That's pretty black and white. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, really understanding if there's an issue, really understanding what the root of that issue and trying to resolve it that way. I mean, I think the best thing we can do as leaders is, you know, read the situation and, and be creative in our approach to solving. Okay. So let's talk about getting out of your comfort zone. So maybe share with us an experience you've had where you've had to get out of your comfort zone to help you grow. Oh gosh. Um, so I'll, I'll relate a uh, recent example. When I joined Map Advisors, uh, I had never done consulting before. I had never worked in M and A before. Just a little bit, having worked with you know some of um, you know some of the other companies doing due diligence, and when we were our, when we were looking at acquiring a company, but I had very limited experience. So I was literally just thrown into the fire. My very first engagement was uh, very large, complex engagement. And um, we work at it as a team here at MAP. So everyone has a role, um, everyone has a responsibility. Problem was I'd never done it before. So, uh, you know, so I was just thrown in. It, it was a great experience. Um, yes, I was a little bit nervous at first, but I had uh, great teachers. The team was great at helping me. And it really, um, you know, it really allowed me to learn from the ground up. And it also, you know, closing that deal and just that experience gave me a boost of confidence for the next deals to come in the future engagements. So, yeah, it was it was a challenge, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Great, great. Thanks for sharing that. So let's talk about mentorship. So have you had mentors over your career and, you know, sort of what is your view on mentorship holistically? Yes, I have had mentors over the years, and I think uh, mentors are, are wonderful. I've been in both formal programs as well as informal. Um, starting out in my career um, in the early part, uh, whenever possible, I uh, participated in a formal mentor formal mentoring program. And then even today, uh, I can pick up the phone and I, three of my former bosses, who I do consider mentors, um, you know, are just a phone call away. And, and we still talk probably on a quarterly basis. Okay. So, you know, one of the things we've talked about uh, regarding mentorship a lot lately has been around, you know, having formal programs and obviously bigger companies have them and you've done that. For smaller companies, sort of what is your advice to people around mentorship? Like how, you know, how do you do that when you don't have a mm -hmm. company that's promoting mm -hmm. you or, or asking you to do it or, or providing you the platform to do it? Any thoughts on what someone in a smaller company should do to mm -hmm. kind of build their mentorship program themselves? Yeah, well, especially in the payments industry, you know, there are several companies. ETA, for for instance, has a uh, a mentoring program that uh, for women called Empower um, that you can become a part of. Uh, Paytech Women is another organization in payments. They have a mentoring program as well. Um, it, you know, go online, ask your bosses. Um, ask your colleagues how they found their mentors. Um, I think that the the opportunity is available. I think you just have to be proactive in finding it. Right. Okay. So let's 
play out a scenario. Young woman's graduating from college. She looks at the payments, fintech industry, says, hey, I'm interested in getting and building a career in payments. What advice would you give her to be successful? I would start before graduating. Um, I would try to get an internship in college, whether it's a summer intern or even during the year, try to get some experience before you graduate. Uh, And a lot of companies will uh, hire, or a lot of companies will hire you out of college. And they sometimes have rotational programs where you can commit to a company for two years. Um, and go through a program. Uh, you'll have three or four, five different roles within that that uh, to your program. And that's a wonderful way to you know really learn the payments industry, uh, get to do different jobs, see what you like, see what you don't like. But I think internship is uh, it is really important. Okay. Any thoughts on big company versus small company starting out? Oh, that's a great question. At, let's see. I started out small. I got progressively went to bigger and bigger companies and then I wanted to go small again, uh, which I did. And then I kind of went back, you know, I kind of went back to the bigger companies and now I'm at a small company. So I think both are great. I think it's great to have experience in a large company, um, especially if you want to someday be an entrepreneur, um, just sort of learning structure, um, you can take, you know, you can take that large public company experience into entrepreneurship uh, very easily. Uh, I think both are great. Uh, both are fun. It's it's personal preference, but try yeah. to get experience in both. Yeah, I think that's important. I'm, I know, you know, I worked at J.P. Morgan Chase, obviously big on the payment side. So I, I had eight years of experience there, and I, you know, I I have nothing bad to say. I think I learned a ton about business and big business and public companies and things like that. So I definitely learned from that. Um, one final question before we wrap up, who or what inspires you to continue to grow throughout your career? Um, well, right now my clients inspire me and my colleagues inspire me. I, I really enjoy what I do at Map Advisors. I really enjoy helping our clients. Uh, and this is sort of a benefit of the small company, right? Is where you really see where your efforts uh, can help a company grow or help a founder exit or whatever the situation may be. Uh, every engagement is different and that's also important. So, you know, every company that, that we work with has different challenges, or has a different goal. And so we go about, you know, helping them in a different way. So it, it never gets boring. It's It's always fun. There's always something different. My colleagues are fantastic, uh, very, very bright people. And um, yeah, helping helping clients is, is what I love to do. Okay, great. Well, I think that's a great way to wrap up the show. So Gretchen, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. I know it's very valuable. So thanks again for being on the show. Thanks, Greg. A special thanks to our sponsors for helping make this month possible, especially our contributing sponsors, Stax Payments, Nuve, and Map Advisors, and to our episode sponsors, NMI, Daily Pay, GND, and Ingenico. To learn more, visit www.leadersinpayments.com.